Welcome, Bankless Nation, to this second episode of our first ever two-part series on Bankless, where we are covering the nouns ecosystem. On Monday, I went live with the Nounders, aka the Nouns founders, uh, about the Nouns project, this NFT project that has really changed the meta of NFTs. And not just NFTs, but also DAOs. It's a very interesting project. If you haven't watched that one yet, that is the first of this second part series. Uh, and we are going to skip over all of those same conversations that we already had in the first uh, episode with the Nounders, like what is Nouns, how did it get built, like what are the details behind it, because we already covered all that. And now today on the show, we are talking to the Nouners, uh, three members of the Nouns owning community. Uh, Jacob, Noun 40 and Noun 22, uh, the different members of the nouns community that all got pulled into nouns because of what it is. Uh, and that'll be one of the first questions I ask them, like why, of all NFT projects that are out there, why nouns? Uh, and we'll start from there and we'll, we'll overall kind of talk about their, the vibe of nouns that they so thoroughly enjoy, their vision for nouns DAO, uh, and what else about nouns do, does uh, really particularly excites them. Uh, so all those conversations are coming up right after we get to some of these fantastic sponsors that make the show possible. Rocket Pool is your decentralized Ethereum staking protocol. You can stake your ETH in Rocket Pool and get our ETH in return, allowing you to stake your ETH and use it in DeFi at the same time. You can get 4% on your ETH by staking it with Rocket Pool, but you can get even more by running a node. Rocket Pool is the only staking provider that allows anyone to permissionlessly join their network of validating Ethereum nodes. Setting up your Rocket Pool node is easier than running a node solo, and you only need 16 ETH to get started. You get an extra 15% staking commission on the pooled ETH that uses your your node to stake. You also get RPL token rewards on top. So if you're bullish e-staking, you can boost your yield by adding your node to the decentralized Rocket Pool network, which currently has over 1,000 independent node operators. It's yield farming, but with Ethereum nodes. You can get started at rocketpool.net, and you can also join the Rocket Pool community in their Discord. You can find me hanging out there sometimes in the chat, so I'll see you there. Arbitrum is an Ethereum layer two scaling solution that is going to completely change how we use DeFi and NFTs. Some of the coolest new NFT collections have chosen Arbitrum as their home, while DeFi protocols continue to see increased liquidity and usage. You can now bridge straight into Arbitrum for more than 10 different exchanges, including Binance, FTX, Huobi, and Crypto.com. Once on Arbitrum, you'll enjoy fast transactions with cheap fees, allowing you to explore new frontiers of the crypto universe. New to Arbitrum, for a limited time, you can get Arbitrum NFTs designed by the famous artists Ratwell and Sugoi for joining the Arbitrum Odyssey. The Odyssey is an eight week long event where you complete on-chain activities and receive a free NFT as a reward. Find out more by visiting the Discord at discord.gg slash Arbitrum. You can also bridge your assets to Arbitrum at bridge.arbitrum.io and access all of Arbitrum's apps at portal.arbitrum.one in order to experience DeFi and NFTs the way it was always meant to be, fast, cheap, secure, and friction free. MakerDAO is the OG DeFi protocol, the first DeFi protocol to ever exist, even before we called it DeFi. MakerDAO produces DAI, the industry's most battle-tested and resilient stablecoin. Using Maker, you don't need to sell your collateral if you need liquidity. Instead, you can spin up a Maker Vault and use your collateral to mint DAI directly. With Maker, the power to mint new money is in your hands. And there's something new in the MakerDAO ecosystem. Every time a new MakerDAO is opened, the owner can claim a POAP, which contributes funds to One Tree Planted, an organization with ongoing global reforestation efforts, creating a world where digital participation and the health of our environment can live side by side. Soon, Maker will be present on all chains and layer twos, bringing the biggest and best DeFi credit facility to everywhere there is DeFi. So follow Maker on Twitter, at MakerDAO, and learn from the oldest and most resilient DAO in existence. All right, and we are back with the Nouners. In the uh, top right corner, we got Jacob, the uh, moon-headed noun. In the bottom left corner, we got, uh, we got noun number 40, I believe. Uh, uh, I don't know uh, how your name is on the screen. Hopefully, that's okay. Um, uh, non, uh, that's <laughs> noun fine. number 40 in the, in the bottom left. And then in the bottom right, we got noun 22, the zombie-handed noun. Uh, Nouners, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having me on. So thank you guys so much. I'm, I'm really going to enjoy some of this perspective. Uh, as I alluded to in the first half of the show, um, Bankless is interested in a noun. As soon as that bank, the bank noun gets minted, uh, we're probably going to snag that one. But, uh, but I want to hear about why you guys uh, got pulled into the nouns group, or the, the nouns organization, the nouns DAO. Uh, what, what about the nouns project? You, you guys are all NFT dabbling individuals. What about nouns really struck your interest? And Jacob, we'll start with you. Um, yeah, I guess for me, 
uh, it first caught my attention because it, it forked the Zora auction house as part of its implementation. So I, and uh, I think uh, I was very close to, to Don Hoffman at the time, who was obviously uh, one of the nouns of the project and, um, you know, a lot of interesting creators and artists that I was a, a big fan of were involved in it. Um, so I've kind of been following it basically since it launched. And then I think the, the thing that was most curious to me when I was like looking through it was the treasury component um, and the like perpetual options and like obviously the, the combination of, of those two things where like just from a pure mechanism standpoint, that was like really intriguing and I'd, I'd like never seen anything like that before. So that's what like initially piqued my interest. And then I guess over the kind of like first six months of the project as I kept um, coming back to it each day and seeing the auctions and then um, tracking the proposals, it became increasingly clear to me that like this was more of an organization than it was necessarily an NFT collection or it's like an organization disguised as an NFT collection in, in, in a way where I was like, wait a second, like, you're seeing all of these internet strangers who have the collective incentive to work together because they know they're being diluted every day. And there is a very straightforward way for these NFT holders to like take control and allocate those treasury for the benefit of everyone, which was fascinating in and of itself because, you know, I think like with the 10K PFP boom or mania or whatever you want to call it, like I think it has kind of these structural issues where a lot of collectors can be left screaming like devs do something because, you know, all of the ETH goes into this black hole where they have no control or say over what to do with all of the ETH generated from that sale. And I think Nouns offers like this really interesting alternative to that. And it's like, instead of devs do something, it's Dow do something. And it's like, wait, oh shit, that's me. I'm part of it. <laughs> oh, that. that's us. <laughs> um, that's us. Uh, and it's just, it's a very simple model and it's set up in a way that means that, you know, you can have people who come together because they like the art, they like the mission or the vision, and they have a very simple way to like work together to, to help propagate that. So once I started to like understand that, it was, you know, like six months later or so was when I ended up, um, buying the the noun you see on my screen here and then you know since kind of jumping into the project it just been increasingly mind blown by the powerful model but i guess that's um the initial draw was forking zora and then and then tracking it and watching it and then being like hang on a second this is this is cool um so yeah that was what got me into it actually yeah, something you said that I'd actually like to dive in on um, is the dilution aspect. And uh, 22 and, and 40, uh, again, 40 bottom left, 22 bottom right. Uh, I'm wondering if, if you share that same uh, uh, idea that the, the dilution is like this motivating factor for the DAO. Is that something that also stuck out to you guys as well? Either one of you? I know it's hard when I don't point to a particular one of you, but just go for it. Whoever wants to go first. Sure. I mean, I thought the dilution was an interesting aspect to it. Um, and by the way, thanks, David, for having us on. Yeah. Uh, but I, I can kind of go into you know what, what drew me to the project, yeah. which I guess the dilution was part of it, but there, there was like a whole bunch of different pieces that came together. Uh, you know, I, I had I've been involved uh, full time in crypto for you know, a few years now. Uh, and whereas NFTs are something that I'm super involved in now, it wasn't something that I initially that I initially kind of clicked with me. You know, I. I was involved in crypto keys in a small way and saw the emergence of punks in, in early 2021, but didn't really have a strong opinion on them. And it wasn't until, I guess, about a year ago, uh, there was a mint for a project that's called Crypto Dick Butts, uh, where everything kind of made itself clear to me. Um, uh, <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. Uh, like it, this idea of like, instead of a lot of NFT projects being based around roadmap, utility, and team trying to sustain hype, Right, I, it kind of it, it dawned on me that I think that what creates a sustainable uh, NFT project that'll capture value is one that captures attention, uh, and then and, and one that is really effectively uh, an internet meme. Uh, and, and I and I kind of came to understand through that meant that I got involved in the early days in that community. Uh, but basically, a larger picture of of memes being art, uh, and, and and the sense that you know our, our generation isn't painting church ceilings and we're not carving things out of marble but the, the, the cultural contributions that we've created that resonate with the most amount of people and define our lives uh, are memes and, and internet memes uh, specifically and so it was after i got involved with that that i heard 4156 on a podcast basically you know laying out his thesis for nouns uh you know describing i, I think punks as the the, the citizen cane of, of of nfts but you know we hadn't seen the, like the jurassic park or the godfather yet 
Uh, and I thought that the combination of, of all these different aspects, you mentioned, you know, the dilution, uh, the distribution mechanism, uh, the treasury, you know, the, the community around a, a, a PFP set, uh, but, but really critically to me, the, the, the potential to create a viral internet meme, you know, with, with just a big treasury and a bunch of smart people, seems like a really interesting endeavor to go on, right? Like, it, it's hard to say how an internet meme gets viral and spreads, but I, 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 from seeing some of the people that were involved in the early days, I had relationships with people, you know, who were involved in the, the first two weeks before I got my noun. Uh, but I thought it would be a, a fun thing to do uh, and see if we could kind of create this with a, a well-financed DAO with a bunch of smart people in it. Uh, but obviously, the, so much has changed over the last year. But that's how that's what drew me to initially. Uh, noun forty, you want to walk us through what piqued you about the the whole noun project and why you decided to buy noun number forty? Totally. I think really the um, the primitive that uh, maybe has been less discussed by, uh, by Jacob and Noun22 here that really drew, drew me was the fact that it was uh, the everything, the artwork and the code base and all the intellectual property was put into the public domain in day one. And that was sort of where it all began. And the question is, is that a thing that can work? I think that question, really interested me because there's a lot of reasons that you can argue that it shouldn't work. Because if um, Board Apes didn't sort of manage the, the brand, for example, let's say, in, in a way where derivatives were not allowed and only like reputable teams could do partnerships, then you could um, imagine why that could unravel. There could be uh, scams, there could be really bad iterations of, of comics or films or, or things that you don't think really represent the brand well. <laughs> so then you would argue that it shouldn't work. Um, but the, the question about like, can this actually work in this chaotic internet driven way where everything is given up for free and you actively lean into that characteristic where you make it easier for derivatives to launch um, their own interpretation. You make it easier for anyone to share it in any way that they want. Could that be kind of a superior way in which you build a brand? <laughs> so we've kind of seen these this like studio model of building brands like Disney or all, every kind of fashion, luxury brand, et cetera, where it's kind of meticulously managed by uh, a group of people. But rather, if you invert that and say, no, but we want the complete opposite, where you put everything out and you maximally encourage and make it easier and easier by actually like funding infrastructure so that it becomes easier to um, create uh, uh, sort of copies or derivatives or your interpretations of it or your tweaks, um, would that be a more competitive model, a, a thing that, that grows faster or better? Um, I think was, it was a really interesting uh, question, question that I kind of couldn't stop thinking about, uh, which then led me to, yeah, uh, bang the So I asked the nounders this same question, I'll, and I'll ask it to you guys. What what it, is it, is there a shared vision, a shared success story for nouns? As in, do, do you think that the DAO, the nouners and the nounders combined, overall share in the same definition of what like a win condition for nouns looks like? Or do you think that this idea of like, what does the DAO want to achieve? Is that still kind of like nebulous and, and up in the air? And Jacob, I'll, I'll start with you on that one. Uh... There was a Venn diagram of everyone's different perspectives on it. I think the thing that would be in the center would be the nouns glosses as like, <laughs> a meme. Um, and then everything else is kind of like secondary to that or in service of propagating the glosses. And I think the, the mechanism kind of works in a way, which is like, well, the more that the meme is propagated, the more valuable the next NFT that goes on sale, which means the more treasury there is to propagate the meme, which means, you know, you kind of get this like very simple and powerful feedback loop, which might be a paperclip maximizer to some extent, like it, it might go, the DAO could be in a position in the future where it's like, hmm, I wonder what building we could knock down and spend $5 billion constructing like a nouns glasses statue. But I think like that is the core, the core essence of the the DAO is or the shared vision is is the I'd say the the glasses and then I would say that the, if there was like a ring around that it would probably be some common ideals and principles around public goods public funding playfulness and then just like fun is <laughs> probably like the combination and then obviously you know 
if, as you get wider and wider out, I think um, the views get increasingly diverse. But I think right at the middle, it's it's propagate the meme is probably the most the most fundamental shared vision, in my opinion. I, I don't know if that's shared. It'd be funny if it's not. <laughs> 40, 20, do you guys agree with that the, the glasses are at the epicenter? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. you go yeah. ahead, 40. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, but I also want to say that the glasses will ultimately become a visual logo or meme that has more meaning to it. The same way that you look at the Nike Swish and you kind of think about athletes that can, um, or empowering athletes, I think there will be more um, ideas that it, uh, the, 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 the sort of meme uh, becomes to have. And in, in a way, the meme, um, in the true sense of the word is like an idea. Uh, and I think spreading the idea is, is part of the, uh, what's captured in the prolific meme. And, and there's a lot of ideas that are core to that. Um, there are these mechanisms that are new that um, now brings together. And in that sense, I think, um, proliferating that model or mental model of the world or the other sort of values that come with this model being possible. Uh, for example, I think Jacob was talking about public goods and I think there's a reason that there's, that's kind of a thing that um, uh, is very closely associated because any digital artwork or code base or et cetera, intellectual property that is put to the public domain is in itself a public good. It can, it's not consumable or um, uh, it's not completable in that sense. So anyways, um, so I think as now as an experiment kind of inherently is an experiment about can you scale the production of public goods, digital public goods, while um, also the people that were involved in that endeavor can monetize and uh, create wealth in that process as well. So um, yeah, I, I think personally the, the, that is a direction that really does excite me. Um, uh, it's, it would be a fun thing for uh, now and glasses to kind of be everywhere around the world, but I think if it didn't mean anything, um, then it, it could kind of be a dystopian future. Uh, and the meaning that I think I would be excited about is now I'm kind of representing a new model where um, you create abundance uh, through a lot of public goods sort of scaled production. I'd love to turn the conversation to public goods, but 22, do you want to add anything onto this so far? Yeah, sure. I, I, I think at its core, uh, like the other guys were saying that, you know, the goal here is to proliferate nouns as a meme. And I think that, you know, the glasses, the noggles are, are the most, you know, mimetically potent thing and kind of lend themselves uh, to being just put on different places. It's easy to communicate. It's easy to understand. Uh, but I do think that nounishness is something since the early days of the project, we've, we've struggled to agree on what is nounish. Right, like what is the mission statement? And, and I, I think that nounishness really is like an emergent quality. There's certain things that we've seen, you know, be you know part of the foundation. Four one five six made an emphasis on public goods in the early days, and that that's really stuck. Uh, but we've seen lots of different types of people, and not just people who want to buy nouns, but just people who are just enthusiastic about it, come into the community and kind of ascribe their own meaning to this to the meme. Uh, and, and I do think that the, the path to scaling this in the future, there's a strong emphasis, uh, you know, a strong culture within the DAO of, you know, CC0 and Ethereum and NFTs. But I do think if we're successful in prol uh, proliferating this, that the ways that different people see and adopt and enjoy this are going to seem really strange and foreign to us. Like if you look at like a Doge or like the Pepe, Right. The, the, the creators of those memes often found that the way that they were adopted to be bizarre or even objectionable. Uh, and I think that, you know, we're doing things like creating a Sufobi dolls of nouns in Japan to appeal to like Japanese doll collectors as a, as a single example. Uh, and I think that when we see the meme get adopted and like it clicks with that community or other different communities, uh, I, I think that the what nouns means uh, in, when it reaches critical mass may potentially seem very strange and different to, to what the, the inner values of the DAO are right now. Um, so all of it is to say is that it's an emergent value set, and I think it's going to be really exciting to see what happens. Yeah, I think there's a broader conversation uh, to have about how well can the nouns DAO actually retain a grasp over what the nouns meme actually is. Um, all good memes that have propagated throughout the internet, like, like you definitely just alluded to, like it, it's like a Pandora's box. Like each meme uh, leaves like the, the grasp of its founders and turns in, gets like misappropriated. 
granted, every single meme has not really had a DAO and a treasury behind it. So that's definitely something that's different about Nouns DAO versus like other, you know, Web2 memes, if you will. Uh, and so maybe that's something to explore in this conversation as to like wh how well can the Nouns DAO actually retain a grasp as to what the Nouns meme actually is. Um, and, and with that, I'd like to turn to this tweet that I'm putting on screen from uh, Punk4156. Uh, Punk, Noun40, you, you brought this to my attention. And they say, uh, the glasses, the Nouns glasses, Nouns without public goods are just another form of Lambo. Public goods without nouns don't scale. One of the opportunities of nouns is to couple them so that so tightly that they mean the same thing. Noggles are Lambos. Noggles fund public goods. Public goods are the new Lambo. Uh, noun 40, I'm wondering if you could uh, unpack this tweet and what, what do you think it means for, for the, me and the listeners? Absolutely. So um, I think an interesting thing about nouns, if you observe it, is that the actual holder count is very small, right? There's only about three to 400 nouns that have been minted so far. And if you consider people that are duplicate owners, then um, probably individuals that own nouns are probably somewhere close to 200. But for some reason, you feel like there's a lot more fans. Um, and if you compare it to other 10K PFB projects, you should, um, th theoretically, from just that angle, a number of people that own it or that are financially sort of incentivized to talk about it or um, uh, discuss it with, with, with on, on Twitter, et cetera, it should be much less. The, 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 the noise that you hear about it, the attention that it, it attracts should be much less. Um, and I think the big reason that it has such attention is that it has a lot of fans. And I think it has a lot of fans because what it, the externalities that it's creating is beyond just itself. So the, for example, nouns, um, the, the DAO funds things that are, let's say is a, is a film that is freely uh, available to everyone. Then that is also something so, so that's, that's in terms of content, but also there is, for example, um, an open source project like Prop House that is building infrastructure to scale DAO funding and other DAOs can use that as well. So I, I think in that way, um, uh, it is, it is creating, um, uh, it is allowing the sort of scaled production of public goods um, and uh, has a mechanism to monetize on that, which is I think the difference between um, before, what was possible before NFTs and after NFTs. The sense that NFTs, um, uh, if you understand them as, as a thing that grows in value, if it attracts more attention and provenance, then, um, those things can be captured. Uh, the, the sort of attention that a public good creates and the provenance that it holds can be captured in nouns. And, and so sort of the symbiotic relationship can, can, can um, uh, accelerate. I think that's what, what 415 is saying where um, public goods doesn't scale without uh, nouns like mechanisms. Uh, but then if nouns like mechanisms didn't have any orientation toward public goods, then it just becomes kind of a wealth signaling like Lambo competition that um, might become circular or uh, uh, have a limit to how much it can propagate. Jacob, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. Go for it. yeah. Yeah, I think um, a, a way to intuit the the forty one fifty six tweet is like, what is what is more valuable, uh, or like what has more status associated with it too? It's like, is it spending a hundred million dollars personally on a massive house, or a hundred million dollars on a public library, and like which is more of a flex? And you could probably argue that like the hundred million dollar public library is much more of a flex than like the massive mansion for yourself. And, you know, there's a bunch of reasons for that, you know, the main one being that not, you know, people other than you can use that public library. Um, and there's, you know, all, that all of the like positive externalities that um, Nan 40 were talking about, you know, you can, you can start to understand and intuit like where that value is coming from in the library case. And I think what, the nouns model offers as a kind of value capture system is like, well, let's say these positive externalities actually get captured back into a meme or a symbol or a brand or whatever you want to call it. That means that it can continue to capture value back from just doing good things. So it's like, if there was a nouns library that, you know, the, the DAO funded $50 million to create, and it's publicly known as the nouns library, what does that do for the, the sale of the next noun tomorrow? 
And it's interesting to like, it's like, it may be that the NFT value increases sufficiently where it could do something bigger or better the next time, um, which is quite different to how we think about brand value capture and like the traditional company sense, or even in like an ESC 20 DAO sense, where it's like, if a, if a DAO in a fungible token construct, like let's say Uniswap was doing the very same action it's harder to understand how that economic value finds its way back to the token, mm. because obviously, you know, the ESC 20 token construct is much more tied to like explicit and provable utility on chain versus me like mimetic and brand value off chain that like NFTs seem to have this like magic of capturing. So, um, yeah, I feel like there's a lot to unpack in there, but I think, um, yeah, the lag yeah that's, way that that's a hot I take. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think distilled, what you just said is that NFTs are more suited to capture the upside from positive externalities, positive global externalities outside of crypto than, than ERC 20s, which, you know, at, at a surface level, I think just kind of makes sense. Um, if, if you can associate like people, people that like, you know, buy, like donate to universities to get their name on some building, mm -hmm. they're doing that for the flex. And that C would definitely seem to be associated with, like it's the brand of your name that is the incentive for doing that. Uh, and so right. I, 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 th I think without thinking about it too much, too deeper than that, I think I definitely agree that NFTs are more suited to capture brand value than, than an, an ERC-20 token is. Exactly. And that has far ranging possibilities if that proves to be true, which is another reason I think I'm like so fascinated by the model. Because if we start now thinking about public protocols on Ethereum as like versions of public goods, it's like, well, what's actually the right DAO construct to be owning and controlling and then sustaining and propagating them? It might be that the Uniswap protocol is the most valuable and important protocol, protocol of Ethereum today. And that may be true, but it could also be true that the current DAO construct might not be the right one. And that something more noun style could be more effective at propagating and sustaining and evolving that public infrastructure over time. On top of the fact that it also means that a nouns DAO type model is not, its value is not predicated on fee extraction or revenue extraction versus I think as we're seeing in the massive Uniswap debates right now, that is kind of the core discussion. And it's like a lot of the value on that token, you could argue is being hinged on the, the ability to actually extract fees. So I think that those two factors combined, you know, add a whole bunch of interesting you know, potential scenarios over the next year for the Nouns DAO and the Nouns DAO model to potentially be a solution to um, a lot of, uh, you know, how we think about DAOs in even public protocol sense. And then, you know, then obviously it might get to public goods in the, in the physical world, but the, the, a lot of the stuff in Ethereum might be where we see interesting stuff in the short term. So yeah, there's a lot of interesting things that come from that. All right, one thing I'd like to ask about is that when you associate a brand with public goods and you're like nouns is planting their noggles in the ground and saying our brand is about public goods uh and then they go off and fund some public library and everyone is saying like oh yay yay nouns for funding this public library and that increases the brand value to some degree public goods are inherently hard to monetize they're hard to, hard to fund they're hard to support and so I'm a little bit conflicted in saying that, okay, it's not like we've just discovered this fantastic like DAO funding mechanism, which is this one like a DAO that's got this like fantastic brand about it just happens to be able to donate money to these public goods and receive more money than they gave out. I, I, I would, I would, I'm skeptical that you can fund a bunch of public goods and like, yes, you definitely get a brand value kickback, but I'm skeptical that you'll get more value than what left the DAO than what actually comes back in brand value. I'm wondering if anybody has any thoughts on this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I can, I can take a stab at it. I think if you think about it from the perspective of like creating public goods that are completely distant from the, the base of fans that Nouns has and people that might buy the NFTs, then you get into that type of really like throwing money out the window and it's so expecting it to come back in some way. But really, if you think about the public goods problem of like a um, actually a coordination market failure, where if you had an economy that had more sufficient sort of 
um, optimal levels of production, that that economy would be stronger, right? It would be a more competitive economy if, for example, there was more and more open source that was properly monetized and that we had more of that. Um, or if, you know, Ethereum as a protocol would be, as an economy would do better if we were somehow able to spend more on Ethereum research and protocol development, which is another public good. So um, but what I'm saying here is that I think the public goods that we're funding at the moment are actually not very out there things, but rather all the things that are internal to our functioning, which is um, another, we're currently funding alternative nouns clients. So we want multiple websites of the nouns option page. That is a public good. Everyone wants more decentralization. Everyone wants more experimentation about front ends and every, every noun holder or every noun fan would benefit from it. But, there, but if it's just an open source sort of code base of a website, then there is no monetization to it. Um, and it's a public good, uh, and, but it serves us. So I, I think another example is Prop House, which is we need to scale funding, we need to scale governance. And how do we scale governance? What, well, by building more tools. And that is also, again, a public good. Basically, you can think of it as infrastructure, infrastructure that gives more leverage because it is uh, sort of maximally credibly neutral and maximally free. Um, and also it can be forked and et cetera. Um, and so then it, I think the, the thesis would be that that nounish economy would start accelerating its production or productivity at a pace that outpaces maybe in the beginning just other NFT collections or other PFP collections, but then later on could just continue to accelerate um, and uh, absorb more of, of uh, crypto's attention or um, uh, yeah, more, more broad things. So, so that would be the intuition that, that, that I think about rather than um, yeah, the, the, the collection of that economy could just become stronger in, in which it competes better. Yeah, I think, and then maybe if we were to take the more, um, like, let's say, assume that fees are a thing that can be sustained in the ecosystem. So like to, instead of all of the ETH having to come from, you know, the daily auction, perhaps like uh, noun style DAOs can operate protocols that do extract fees. If you are to compare you know, all else being equal, a DAO in ERC-20 token form that cannot capture value from brand directly versus a DAO that can capture value from brand directly might mean that they're able to undercut that other DAO in fees either way to continue to sustain themselves at the same level. So if, um, so it's like, if, if you think about protocols as like the most forkable thing and brand is the most valuable, like the least forkable thing, then if we have a really good model that helps you know propagate and proliferate a brand far and wide then like that might actually give a competitive advantage to offer the lowest possible fees on a given protocol versus a doubt that does not have that same construct um if you were to take the the case that fees can be extracted um as well jacob are you kind of making the argument that a nounish economy a nounish like model can proliferate far beyond just like an nft model and an NFT project model, but like find its way into like perhaps most of the DeFi apps, like DAOs, et cetera, that we see in this space? Uh, yeah, that's exactly, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm saying. And I think like what we've actually, I think like, um, yes, I think that the nounish model could potentially be used to proliferate many more things other than just memes exclusively. I think the memes will be at the core of any good DAO. But I think those memes could be bundled with a protocol or a product or a particular mission that is not just, um, you know, not just like the meme itself. So I, I actually think that uh, Nounish style DAOs and protocols is a very interesting area to explore. And then for like what we typically expect to see instead of fashion brands or, um, artist brands like kind of using companies as their core ownership mechanism, this may actually be the, the DAO structure that would make sense for most organizations to actually start as, because as Noun40 was saying, it solves this like coordination problem. You can basically start one of these DAOs around some shared idea, and then it's a very effective model for anyone to organize around it and allocate capital around it. So uh, we believe this view, like at Zora, we believe this view so strongly that we're basically building a tool to help people do exactly that. So we're, we're launching a nouns builder, which is like, hey, here's how you very easily launch your own noun style DAO um, to do whatever you'd like, 
And then that whole protocol that we built for it is actually going to be nouns DAO style controlled. So like the first DAO created using this tool is the DAO that owns and controls the whole thing. And like ownership of that will be split between nouns and Zora and all, everything in between. So um, yeah, I think, um, I think that model is, I think it makes sense for a lot more than just, just the nouns DAO specifically. So we want to make it easy for everyone else to do the same thing and just kind of let a thousand flowers bloom and see what happens. You, you talked about uh, like DAOs, the, the, a nounish model being good for DAOs, but like, what about like a centralized company that already has a brand? Do you think like they could leverage this kind of model? I think so. And we're going to try and find out ourselves. <laughs> like we're, we're, we're building this tool in part to use it for a lot of the stuff we're doing for, for Zora. Um, so it, it's probably, I'd hope it's possible and we're going to, we're going to see if it is, and we're going to try it ourselves. Um, obviously there's a lot but of- Zora like, is also a protocol, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. but it's like, I think Zora is like, we kind of play at the two extreme ends of brand and protocol. I think like our brand is like probably one of the most valuable things that we've created, and cultivated and put a lot of time and energy into. And we obviously have a protocol as well that we dedicate about engineering resources to. But I think the nouns, the Zora brand and a nouns model could actually work very well. Um, so yeah, not every brand I think could make a similar transition, but I think in our case, we probably could. Interesting, interesting. I, I, I do want to quickly note that even though I'm incredibly bullish, uh, that I, I don't think everything is suitable for nouns model. Um, and I think it, the, really the question is whether a lot of things make sense to take some fee, for example. Um, a, lot, a lot of things make sense for there to be a lot of human operation. Um, and the DAO structure is maybe might not be that suitable for, for different things. I mean, I mean in, in the same way that, that even though public goods are so great, Private goods still makes total sense. You'll still need a car, you'll still need a meal, um, and you need uh, entities that create those things. And those entities will not will not be public goods oriented DAOs. So I, I think we will likely see um, uh, we will discover the boundaries in which this mechanism <clears throat> makes sense. But I think I align with Jacob in the sense that there's probably a fair amount of crypto protocols in which this DAO, or this 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 mechanism actually makes more sense um, because it not, not only has that ability to capture the sort of the positive externalities that it creates, but on top of that, I think we're currently experiencing a fair amount of, of difficulty uh, where the, the best thing for the protocol would be for it to be a hyperstructure. Uh, and, and Jacob can talk more about hyperstructures, but, um, but basically a protocol that does not have any sort of governance um, uh, uh, levers to control or take any fees and it kind of is, uh, maximally credibly neutral, and everyone can kind of trust that layer and build on top of it, understanding that the um, main elements of it will not change, such as the kind of how much economic rent that it extracts, or sort of how the parameters in which it operates, et cetera. So then the people can like build on top of it. I think a lot of crypto's aspirations is to create those types of really important, um, uh, credibly neutral uh, uh, protocol layers that then later things can be built on top of. But, but those layers currently, um, I think because there is no better way of monetizing it, I think they're often monetized with governance tokens, not necessarily because adding that is the right thing for sort of increasing its sort of credibly neutral uh, traits, but rather because that is like how you, there's the only way that you can fund it, it seems. Um, and uh, I think for those cases in which what the protocol is actually trying to do is becoming more like a quasi public good protocol that does not um, that that serves the public for free. Uh, then, in those models, I do think this could work really well um, and could go could go beyond um, the NFT PFP collection realm of things. Interesting. Well, guys, that this has been a very uh, meta conversation and started to really open my eyes about why so many people are, are nouns pilled. I don't know if you guys have a word for this in the nouns ecosystem being nouns pilled, but uh, I, I definitely see it. I want, I want to uh, turn this conversation to a little bit more granular, back, back to less about nouns philosophy and more about uh, concretely the nouns DAO. Um, just about like the current meta of DAO governance, of the governance over nouns. Like what are people up to in uh, the nouns DAO governance? And, also some, some other questions as well. So we're gonna go get to all those questions and more right after we get to some of these fantastic sponsors that make the show possible. 
There is a brand new staking feature in the Ledger Live app today. We all like staking the assets that we're bullish on, and now you can stake seven different coins inside the Ledger Live app. Cosmos, Polkadot, Tron, Algorand, Tezos, Solana, and of course, Ethereum. With Ledger Live, you can take money from your bank account, buy your most bullish crypto asset, and stake that asset to its network, all inside the Ledger Live app. Through a partnership with Figment, Ledger also lets you choose which validator you want to stake your assets with. And Ledger is running its own validating nodes, offering a convenient way to participate in network validation, and it even comes with slashing insurance. Ledger Live is truly becoming the battle station for the bankless world, so go download Ledger Ledger Live. If you have a ledger already, you probably already have it and get started securely staking your crypto assets. The Brave browser is the user first browser for the Web3 internet with over 60 million monthly active users. And inside the Brave browser, you'll find the Brave wallet, the secure multi chain crypto wallet built right into the browser. Web3 is freedom from big tech and Wall Street, more control and better privacy. But there's a weak point in Web3, your crypto wallet. And most crypto wallets are browser extensions, which can easily be spoofed. But the Brave wallet is different. No extensions are required, which gives Brave browser an extra level of security versus other wallets. Brave wallet is your secure passport for the possibilities of Web3. And supports multiple chains, including Ethereum and Solana. You can even buy crypto directly inside the wallet with RAMP. And of course, you can store, send, and swap your crypto assets, manage your NFTs, and connect to other wallets and DeFi apps. So whether you're new to crypto or you're a seasoned pro, it's time to ditch those risky extensions and it's time to switch to the Brave wallet. Download Brave at brave.com slash bankless and click the wallet icon to get started. The Layer 2 era is upon us. Ethereum's Layer 2 ecosystem is growing every day and we need Layer 2 bridges to be fast and efficient in order to live a Layer 2 life. Across is the fastest, cheapest, and most secure cross-chain bridge. With Across, you don't have to worry about high fees or long wait times. Assets are bridged and available for use almost instantaneously. Across's bridges are powered by UMA's optimistic oracle to securely transfer tokens between Layer 2s and Ethereum. Across's critical ecosystem infrastructure and Across V2 has just launched. Their new version focuses on higher capital efficiency, Layer 2 to Layer 2 transfers, and a brand new chain with Polygon, all while prioritizing high security and low fees. You can be a part of Across's store by joining their Discord and using Across for all of your Layer 2 transferring needs. So go to Across.to to quickly and securely bridge your assets between Ethereum, Optimism, Polygon, Arbitrum, or Boba networks. All right, fam, and we're back into the conversation with the Nowners. And I was just joking half a second ago that sometimes the best conversations uh, occur when people aren't... Uh, perceived to be on air. Uh, and so we're going to recreate the conversation that we just had a second ago. And I was, I was kind of like recapping what we were just talking about in the first half of the show. And like the, the, the gist that I've gotten is that the nouns community, or at least the three nouners here, believe that this daily issuance of NFT mechanism that has a very strong brand associated with it can turn into this funding for public goods. Uh, so say, for example, that like ins instead of Uniswap having the Uni token, it had this like nounish type economy is issuing these like Uni NFTs in this nounish way. And people were buying these Uni NFTs because the brand of Uniswap is so strong. Meanwhile, on, on the other side of things, you have like Uniswap, which is pro pro providing a public liquidity service to like all of DeFi, a public good. This, this uh, protocol that, that allows us to have so much liquidity on all of our ERC-20 tokens. But instead of that being like funded by this token or even before that, like private equity and, and all that stuff. Instead, you have this like nounish mechanism where you have these people that are buying these assets, which are associated with like the Uniswap brand. And so those assets are like the private assets, but the public goods are being funded by these a very small set of individuals who are paying, paying very high prices for like this particular brand. And so you have like this public good on one side and then these like this brand on the other side. And you have these speculators or just participants buying these NFTs, releasing this nounish mechanism. And like, I think the general gist here is that this doesn't, the nouns are just the first model of this, but we can proliferate this model to so many more things beyond nouns. And that's kind of why nouns have this public goods branding associated with it is that we can create these public goods and then like fund them with a really strong brand. Is that kind of the gist of what we were talking about? I think that's right. I would also add on, it's it's not only, not owning the NFT is not just owning part of the brand or the meme. It, there are also very hard on-chain rights, which is like you have governance control over this shared treasury. And it's a growing, it's a currently growing treasury, but there's also like, and right now that treasury is predominantly ETH, but it's also starting to accrue ownership in other DAOs. For example, like 10% of the Lil Nouns DAO 
like that supply is automatically given to the nouns DAO. So it's like if for whatever reason the nouns DAO wanted to start participating in that uh, organization's process and treasury and mission, it, it could. So if we start imagining many different nouns DAOs forming and potentially like giving this kind of like kickback in ownership to the nouns DAO treasury, you could imagine that the governance value of these NFTs is, is, is getting as valuable as like the brand itself. Um, so I think that's like a, that's another important piece where I think everything you said is true. And there's also like hard on-chain governance rights that come with, mm -hmm. um, namely control over whatever, whatever is in the treasury, which maybe is a good segue into like what is happening with that treasury and the governance and stuff like that, which I know now 22 has a ton of thoughts on. Forty, you want to say something at all? Yeah, no, I just, I just want to say maybe that I'm on the other side of that in the sense that I think, um, if the governance value, uh, as in the your ability to monetize the governance power. Let's say you could fund certain proposals that you have some sort of economic relationship with. Let's say you, you're part of another protocol DAO, and if Nouns has a protocol to a uh, proposal to sort of um, send some economic value that way, then um, you could extract some value out of the governance power that the token has, right? <clears throat> but I think if those types of things become the main reason in which why people find nouns tokens valuable and buy them, then I think it, it kind of, in my mind, limits um, the growth of, of what this can become and becomes more like a, more like a traditional organization or um, uh, any sort of org in which sort of capturing the governance of that org where you can extract value from that. And um, I think that's, Personally, less less exciting, and I would be more exciting of of the version in which uh, it was more purely that the brand value maximally increases, and the brand is a is a public brand in the sense that everyone anyone can do anything with that brand. Um, but what is ultimately privatized and owned is the the provenance value, um, uh, closer to what why a Picasso or like a Jackson Pollock would would be worth a lot because it kind of has a claim on originality of the everything that came after it, the influence that it had on, on society or culture, um, the, the claim on that sort of originality is what makes those pieces very valuable. Um, and, and I think there's a chance that that now NFTs can have that same outcome. Um, and uh, that would be Personally, the version that I, I would be most excited about, uh, less the version of the governance tokens becoming incredibly powerful, and then there being a lot of bribes and an economy that that feeds that, et cetera. Certainly, certainly. But let's turn into uh, the governance aspect, the actual concrete governance of, of Noun Style. Let's take a, a peek under the hood there. Can you guys describe the the meta, if you will, of what the Nouns governors are? thinking about, like, what are some of the big proposals that have captivated attention? What are some of the ideas that people really like? Is there overall like a theme as to what nouns governance is really going after? Uh, 22, I'll throw this one to you. Yeah, sure. It's interesting just because I think that the governance meta that you're referring to is pretty fluid uh, and really has been changing with, I, I think, A, the number of participants we have, uh, and then B, the participants who are, are active at, at any given time. Uh, I guess some of the things that we've noticed recently that we just talked about on the call is now that we've scaled the, I think there's like 400-ish nouns, uh, 200 unique members and, and somewhere between 50 and 60 who are in, in some degree active participants. Uh, I, I've just noticed personally as someone who's been involved when there's you know basically like 20 of us, uh, uh, but with only like five or six people talking on any given day, uh, just the, the, the challenges that come uh, in some ways with, with, with uh, you know, scaling this out and getting everyone's voices heard and getting everything fairly considered. Uh, and, you know, we're starting to see, call it uh, voting blocks, political factions, almost. No, everyone kind of is really on the same page about most things, but we've seen uh, an increased emphasis on, on people, you know, uh, being delegated different votes uh, to, you know, to, to espouse their viewpoint. Uh, and also where I think there's been what 4156 has termed uh, in the Senate, uh, a difficulty adjustment. Uh, if you think about other protocols, you think about like the Bitcoin difficulty adjustment that we have recently had towards protocols. I think uh, now success has been has been great and it's gotten a lot of eyes on the protocol, though I think that uh, without pointing fingers specifically, I've just, we've just seen so many, uh, so much, so much new, I mean, so many new proposals coming into the DAO, so many new requests for funding uh, that it's been a little bit overwhelming. And I think it's caused us to go from when, in the early days, we were just happy to you know fund anything that supported us. 
to now being a bit more selective about the things that we fund because we have so many talented builders uh, coming to the DAO. Uh, and I think I've, I've said a lot, so I'm happy, I'm happy that we can maybe drill down on any of the points that I just made. Sure. Before, before I do, Jacob, Hong, anything you want to add? Yeah, absolutely. I think the meta of the governance is about scaling governance. Uh, and so how do we... <clears throat> the nice thing about the continuous option model um, and one NFT, one vote model is that um, the complexity is scaling somewhat linearly, at least in the, in the member count. <clears throat> so as, as now 22 noted, that, you know, a, a year ago, we were a few dozen people, and now we're a few hundred people. <clears throat> and, and, but that's kind of predictable. So, so we can kind of build our own infrastructure to adopt to the increasing complexity <clears throat> of larger members. And I think one of those examples that is most concrete is Prop House, for example. <clears throat> Prop House is... Um, uh, sort of an open source project uh, that provides a token voting UI and uh, a, a thing called rounds where, prop, where, where ETH is the thing being auctioned and proposals are the things that are creating the bid. And then a token ranking creates sort of the cutoff where everything above a certain cutoff gets funded and uh, you, you, you can continue. And that's, the, for example, the type of thing that reduces the governance burden because not everyone has to vote to create some sort of appropriate ranking, like if, even if 5% of the nowners vote, then probably the ranking of proposals um, that is created is reasonably sufficient. Um, and also that you can do more things kind of credibly neutrally at scale. So for example, um, something that is very hard to do is like an RFP, like request for proposal, like a foundation wants to build a building, what they usually do is they put out a request proposal and then a lot of architects Put proposals. <clears throat> that type of thing is very difficult to do um, in a sort of a standard compound governance uh, type of model. Um, and Prop House, for example, we recently had two mandated rounds. The first round was uh, a request to create more nouns clients outside of the canonical main site. And there were, um, uh, uh, I think, 20 to 30 proposals that are really competent. And then the four best teams got funded. And then now they're all working on it. And so that, that type of ability to, let's say, do requests for proposals where then there's no, we can just decide that this is the thing that we want to do. And then the, the, which specific team, which specific budget, those things are kind of um, uh, put to the, to, to the side and sort of segregated into a separate competition um, is a way of, for example, scaling the governance. And I think um, that's a lot of where our, our attention is um, because as now 22 noted, it is getting more complex with more, more voting members and also more people coming with ideas and proposals. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Uh, like one of the, we basically, I guess when I look at it from a top down, we, we have this treasury, right? With the stated purpose of some of it's to be sustainable, but ultimately to do things that proliferate the meme. Uh, and as things have scaled, like Hong was saying, you know, the, the doing on-chain proposals has become more difficult. And now it's kind of been reserved for some of the larger, bigger asks, just because it requires the attention of so many different members. Uh, Prop House, you know, allows us to kind of more effectively, uh, like Hong was suggesting, do rounds where you can say, oh, you know, we have five to 10 prizes of two ETH or five ETH. And it gets a lot of, you know, smaller builders funded initially. Uh, and then the other mechanism that we have uh, is a group that I run called Small Grants, which is basically just a, a more centralized version, you know, having, you know, run this group for the last call it year, uh, me and, and the other members of the group just make centralized decisions on things that we think are interesting, things that we think that we should just strategically fund uh, for the good of the DAO. Uh, and I will also just use this as an opportunity to plug that group and say, if there's anyone who's listening to this, who wants to contribute to Nouns, who has an interesting idea, uh, to please come to the Discord and come to the, the, the grants and retro funding channel. Uh, since if you demonstrate, you know, a genuine interest in nouns uh, and want to work on it, uh, you can get funded pretty quickly. Uh, and what I think is really exciting about nouns uh, is not just can you get funded pretty quickly, uh, but creatives or, or, or technicals or, or other types, people who want to come contribute to nouns uh, and demonstrate a, a genuine interest can get funded very quickly to work on a com uh, creative project completely of their own design. Uh, you can think of what you're good at, what you have a passion for, and everyone has their own skill set. And I think this is such a, a, a broad, open uh, project that really anyone can contribute. Uh, so if you think about you, you know, what interests you, what you're good at, and if you demonstrate a gen genuine passion for nouns, like we will fund you. Uh, and, and, and it will be you know, very seamless, very easy, and there's very clear paths to scaling that funding uh, as you deliver, as you do things for the DAO, as you contribute. So 
you know, the uh, nouns, I think, is one of the cleanest meritocratic structure, structures there is uh, in the sense that people are can be very directly rewarded uh, for their time, energy and the merit of their compensations to the uh, to their contributions to the DAO. What's like the biggest proposal that's gone through? What was is there like a the grand big proposal that got the most funding that did the, mo the biggest thing? Does anything come to mind there? I think one that's probably comes to mind as has had the, the greatest impact outside of the DAO. And I'm, well, th there's, there's two. One came from within where I, I, I want to highlight this one. It was called, it's Noun's Vision, uh, where this one builder, and I think it really illuminates the, the model of what's possible with, with Noun's and Noun's funding. Uh, this one builder named Salvino came to the DAO. Uh, Salvino, not his real name, uh, a pseudo that he had spun up uh, just specifically for this purpose with a new Twitter account and a new Discord account said that he wanted to make a luxury brand, a luxury line of sunglasses using the nouns design, uh, you know, with, with no, you know, background for us to look up on him. He basically came to us. I had a conversation with him from small grants. We funded him with two or three ETH to work on it for a couple of weeks and show us some kind of prototype. You know, we were able to de-risk it, see that he was talented, uh, you know, see that he, you know, his, his work delivered in the early days. Uh, and then funded that for a much larger on-chain proposal. I don't know the I don't have the exact dollar number uh, in front of me, but it was one of our more sizable ones uh, that included uh, giving Salvino a noun uh, in, in 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 you know as comp compensation for his contributions to the DAO. Uh, I think that one was big. Uh, and then separately, we also had one where we gave a noun uh, to Bud Light uh, in exchange for using the nouns glasses and noggles uh, in a Super Bowl ad, which I think was our biggest call it normie. Uh, exposure uh, that we've had from other proposals. Um, but I don't know, guys, is, is there anything else that comes to mind that I'm, that I'm missing? There, there probably is. Uh, I think the, there's a decent amount of capital that went towards actually establishing and maintaining the the foundation. I know that was a really big one. And then the second um, prop house, um, which I think is, that's been one of my personal favorite projects just in the ecosystem outside of now is just generally, but I think that was a pretty sizable proposal to, um, to continue development of that, that piece of public infrastructure. Um, they're like the main ones in terms of, in terms of size, there's like some insane proposals just generally that are in, uh, that the DAO funded that are just like, it's just fun. It's like, I would, I would recommend reading through the proposals and nouns. It's very different to any other DAO instead of it being like, small variable config changes or like treasury diversification the whole time. It's like, oh, what what if we just send like a noun to the International Space Station and pay NASA to do that? Like it's there, there's there are some that are truly absurd um, and then truly ambitious too. So it's like a, it's a really cool mix. Um, but the the foundation one and the prop house one are the ones that kind of stick out in my mind is the, the largest, I think. Um, yeah. So much building UI that just shows the <laughs> ranks them by each spent. I'm realizing that that's not actually in the UI. So I think that's a cool thing for someone to to design. Yeah, I think that what's interesting there are there have been some proposals that you know we we spent a ton of money. So I've found that taking a ton of money and spreading it out under a bunch of much smaller proposals, at least in my experience from the stuff that, that I've seen personally, has yielded a better result. Or or, or I shouldn't say a better result. I should say just a, a greater return on investment over time versus one centralized thing. So I, I think that what's critical to the future of scaling the DAO is leveraging tools like Prop House or finding out other ways to do small grants programs to get one to two ETH in the hands of, of as many talented builders as we possibly can, uh, and then use that as a way to onboard them as a funnel into the DAO uh, and scale up their contributions from there. Uh, since I think that you know, really what we're trying to do is get them engender the most loyalty, get the most community members in here. And I think that it works more effectively at an individual level. This isn't to say that we should not do big proposals, but rather to say that the, that big proposals are, are uh, not, are, are just one part of, of the, the, the things that we can do to effectively you know, prolif proliferate the meme. Very quickly, I, th I think I, I might have the other side on that in the sense that I, I do think the long term contribution is, is really great, but ultimately what we would want is, is really ambitious things uh, that ultimately that talent going through uh, a, a curve and then really attempting truly ambitious things that would take the budgets. Um, and I think we're, we're seeing some examples of that. The best one is a recent proposal passes the esports team pod. Uh, we, we had funded um, a, a Dota 
uh, team uh, for maybe like 100 or 150 ETH. And then that did really well. So then now we're putting together a, a sort of a, a larger pod that would uh, sponsor more esports teams. And it spent, I think, maybe 350 ETH or something like that. So I think that's really exciting to me. So finding a vertical that works, that, that delivers the sort of attention ROI, and then being able to spend more and more and more uh, and more uh, sort of ambitious things. Beautiful. Well, guys, I sadly have to get to a call. So if there's one last uh, message that you guys would like to give to the Nouns community, I'll give you guys the floor. Jacob, Noun22, Noun40, anything you guys want to say? Cool. Yeah, thanks for having us. And, and like I said before, if you want to contribute or just want to learn more about the Nouns project, just come to the Discord. Um, easy to find us there. Cheers. Well, guys, thank you so much for, for joining me and having this uh, two-part episode on the exploration into nouns. I feel much wiser about nouns. Thanks, David. Yeah, thank you. Man. Cheers, guys. Okay, risk and disclaimers, everyone. Uh, I don't have this pulled up ready to go, so let's see if I can do this from memory. Uh, ETH is risky. Crypto is risky. Nouns, probably also risky. You can lose what you put in, but we are headed west. This is the frontier. I'm glad you're with us on the bankless journey. Thanks a lot. <laughs>